Hello and welcome to Nintendo Agenda again. It's been a while since I've made a video. Uh, I probably should have been making videos as, as time has gone on. Uh, there's some Metroid music in the background. Um, and this is just a static image, so you don't need to. You can just listen to it like it's a podcast or something. You don't have to watch it. There's no slideshow. There's no video. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's so much to talk about, but that's not what the video is going to be about. But I'll just go over some things that I think that need to be talked about. Um, the overall macroeconomic state of the world and video games. It's a bit crazy right now. A lot of people don't don't. A lot of people that are that cover games, they just don't really talk about how bad the world is. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe video games are an escape from reality and 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 such. So therefore, they they are escaping the world through video games. But they need to be a little bit more, you know, aware. But that's not what this video is about. Um, speaking of bad things going on and affecting our little world of gaming, GameStop may be going bankrupt uh, next year. Late this year, I don't know. <laughs> Before Christmas, who knows? I don't know. Um, but it's... If GameStop goes out... See, I, I work at a game store. It's not GameStop, of course, but... Um, I don't... I don't... Um, not trying to crap on GameStop. I'm not trying to like I I think at the store level and I think what they do is good overall. It's just upper middle management and the higher ups at the company and all of the BS that happened to them in the last like 5 years because of um people doing some shady stuff with uh stock trades and then the pan pandemic kind of like you know, people have less uh, expendable income and didn't want to travel at that time. So they were going back into gaming and that helped GameStop, that helped our company uh, that I work for, um, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but if they are hurting, then that just shows that the rest of everything else is going to hurt. And what I fear is, is that if they go out then that's the next step close closer to the all digital future that some of these jackasses want. So, and that we as consumers and we as people um, who play games should never want. You, you you don't want that kind of a future. It's ruined music. It's ruined uh, movies. It's it'll ruin games. So, but whatever. <clears throat> they're gonna do what they're gonna do, and that's not what this video is about. Nor is it about all the rumors of uh, Nintendo's next system. I could go on and on about that. Um, this movie is, or this uh, video, or really vlog or podcast or whatever you want to call it, um, is going to be about the Game Awards tomorrow. Now, I don't like the Game Awards, um, but I still watch it to keep tabs on what I call the industry. These, you know... <sighs> People who um, <laughs> don't realize how quacky they are, but you know, still I, I watch it to keep tabs on tabs on that because I, you know, I genuinely care about games and I love games, uh, and you know, it's just good to even though it's very non Nintendo, um, the rest of the industry. Uh, I still keep tabs on it, you know, and plus I work in games a little bit in, in retail. So, I mean, it, it's good to keep in, in touch with that. So Game Awards is something that I, while I bemoan because of all the things that I don't like about it, I still I still watch it. I don't like, um, you know, Jeff Keighley's favorite washed up shitty musician or band come on there making an appearance that has nothing to do with games, but he does that, it seems like, almost every game award show. Um, I don't like how it downplays other major award shows, yet is just like them, with the judges and the and the BS and the... Uh, it's it's kind of disgusting. It's like they're like, we're better than, than the Academy Awards. And it's like, well, 
you're just like them. You're you're ridiculous. Um, I don't like the predictable because you see it coming every time. This predictable pseudo political and diversity shit. Just lay off of that stuff, guys. Come on. But they're not going to. They love to be white knights. Uh, I don't like all, a lot of the um, award categories. Some of them are just like redundant, you know. And they mash things together that, and I guess it's because there's not enough, um, there's not enough of certain types of games every year, so they have to mash things together, which is really a call out to the industry itself, not necessarily the award show, but still the award show is kind of a part of that. So um, I don't like most of the nominees they choose for certain categories and stuff. Um, you know, we already know that there's been things that have been snub-nosed over the years and there's things being snub-nosed now uh, that should have been a part of it, but they're, you know, they're deliberately not doing it because of a bias and whatever. I mean, we're all biased in our own ways, but you can't pretend to be um, inclusive and then be biased. Yeah, you can't do that. I don't like the constant blowjobs. The constant... Uh, like worship of PC and PlayStation and Kojima. Now, don't get me wrong. PlayStation is a part of the industry. So is PC. So is Kojima in a, in a certain way, uh, Hideo. But blah, it's a, it's too much. It's like blatant fanboyism for for those three especially. And I get it. PC is where a lot of people are headed within the industry and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I'm a Nintendo guy. So I don't, I don't look at it that way. And the bad state of the economy is why people are like, oh, well, why get a game system when I can emulate all the stuff on a PC or on my phone or this, that, or the other. There's a whole bunch of arguments that we could go through on that, but they feed into that at the Game Awards. I don't like that they... Um, the show and the industry basically snub nose uh, the industry leader. Nintendo is the industry leader, not just in console games, but just in gaming in general. It's just, you can't just be like, <clears throat> act like they don't exist. And that's what they do. And I get it. That's what the industry has always done. Uh, so whatever. Uh, but So why do I even watch um, if I hate it so much? Or if I don't like all that stuff, I'll tell you why I watch. Um, sometimes there's gems. Um, again, to keep the tabs on the industry as a whole, because I like to do that. Um, I, I can't just stick myself in just that Nintendo, um, you know, what do you call it, community. And just, because um, I don't like some of that, too. <laughs> but, um, I I can't just pigeonhole myself there. I, I got to be aware of what else is going on. Um, and sometimes the Game Award or Orchestra has some unique people in it and, and some unique stuff going on with it. So um, it, that's fun. And plus gaming music, whenever they've had gaming music on there too, um, that are either a part of the Game Awards Orchestra or the um, just music in general that is uh, gaming related and sometimes that can be cool i like that um please no more imagine dragons <laughs> uh cringe moments live are are funny to watch i mean you know uh like the bill clinton kid and everything i mean you don't get that uh, uh unless you're watching it live it's i mean you get it but it's like old news by that time because the internet moves so fast <laughs> Um, and sometimes there is a nice Nintendo thing going on. And, uh, I mean, there's been some years where Nintendo has had a really good show, show uh, showing at the uh, Game Awards. And so, just in case, I'm there for it for that, you know. 90% uh, of the show could be absolute crap, but if Nintendo's there for a good chunk of that, I, yeah, I think it'll be good. Um... So, what? Nintendo can't be there this time. Now, of course, most of the industry has already moved on. They have already said, oh, Nintendo's old. They were saying Nintendo was old before, even when the Switch 
was outselling everything. They're, you know, that's how they are. Um, they're the industry leader, and they still are, but they they don't acknowledge that. Um, but Nintendo still has done stuff at the Game Awards, and I think that they might be doing something this year. Even though most people are looking to next year or looking to the next system, um, and I think that will play a part in this because, you know, yes, they got a lot of holiday stuff going on, bundles and stuff for the original Switch, but they've already acknowledged, you know, uh, I'm not going to get too deep into um, what Nintendo may do for plans or whatever, but the Game Awards can be used a little bit because it does speak to a specific audience. These, This audience cares about graphics. This audience cares about a next-gen system. This audience cares about hardcore gaming. You know, it's silly. It's childish. But there is part of that in Nintendo with certain games, so they can play into that, you know. Um, but getting things out of the way, um, what I think that they, they could say something about is the next Mario or Zelda or Donkey Kong game or even movie. They could talk about the Zelda movie. They could talk about the next Mario movie. They could even announce a Donkey Kong movie. I don't think that they will, though, not at the Game Awards. Um, while it would be a good platform, I think they'll just do that stuff on their own. The only thing that I see from those three, Mario, Zelda, Donkey Kong, would be like if they announce and shadow drop um, like Zelda Wind Waker and Twilight Princess collection. I think they'd bundle them together and they'd basically be the HD ones that were on the Wii U just ported over. You know, uh, that's that's my thought. Um, same thing if they did with Metroid uh, Prime 2 and 3. If they'd probably bundle them together and it'd probably just be like an HD version of what was on the Wii with the, you know, the um, the controls that were in the Metroid Prime Remastered. Um, I was kind of surprised that they didn't already announce Metroid Prime 2 or 2 and 3 together uh, like they did with 1. Maybe they just didn't want to overload it too much. Um, blah, blah, blah. But Metroid Prime 1 has done very well. Of course, there may be some internal politics in Nintendo that don't want the first one to do well because it was made by Americans originally um, in Retro Studios and then you know I don't know how the remake was handled too much but I imagine there was a little bit more Japanese inf uh, influence or not necessarily influence but uh, um, more of the Japanese worked on it but it was still originally it was done by Americans that all aside, they probably wanted Dread to do better, even though Dread, you know, great game, very Japanese-ish, but it was made in Spain, so I, I, I don't know why they would, maybe because it's considered more mainline, as opposed to Metroid Prime being a side thing, but the most successful Metroid games have been the Prime games, we just can't deny that. Um, and it was successful even on a platform like GameCube, which is nowhere near the user base that the Switch has, or even, you know, that the uh, Super Metroid had on Super Nintendo and Metroid had on regular Nintendo, you know. So we could go on and on about Metroid, which <laughs> I plan to do, actually. But um, I just wanted to get some things out of the way uh, as far as Mario, Zelda, and Donkey Kong. They may say something about the next movies or the next games, but I don't think that they, I think the only big thing that might happen in those, with those three would be, uh, an announcement and shadow drop of, uh, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess collection together. And I was just making that correlation to Metroid Prime 2 and 3 might be together if they do do one for Switch, which I think it'd be stupid not to because, you know, if 4 is coming to the Switch, which it is, um, they want to have two and three on there too, just like they did with Pikmin. Four came, they brought Pikmin one and two, and then they ported over the Pikmin three from uh, Wii U. Blah blah blah. <clears throat> um, and I'm not going to go into more of what Nintendo might do with the next system. 
Uh, but I will make a prediction on what I think might be the big thing that they might announce at the Game Awards, um, which would kind of might play into the next system, but it'll be more like, you know, they may not even name name the system. Or maybe they will. Who knows? I don't know. But this is my thought. Um, Metroid Prime 2 and 3 will shadow drop. Uh, that'll be... Uh, either along with Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker, and Twin uh, Twilight Princess collection, like collections both released in December, just out of nowhere before the holidays. Uh, it'd probably be digitally first, and then January you can buy them physically. Who who the hell knows how they'll do it? Um, <clears throat> hopefully they don't do it as disastrously as they did with uh, the Metroid Prime Remastered. I felt it was a disaster because they shadow dropped it. And then you got it almost a month before in digital before you could get it physical. And I'm a physical person. You know, I, I want it. I want to own what I buy. Thank you. Um, and then right after they shadow drop that. Or maybe before, I don't know, they will do uh, finally a Metroid Prime 4 trailer and say 2024, whether it be spring or early or just say 2024. Or maybe they might have a full date. Um, and then, you know, not only will it be like Metroid Prime 4, boom, and then a trailer, or a trailer and then Metroid Prime 4, and then underneath that it'll say, you know, 2024, maybe more specific about when, and then it'll say, it could possibly, depending on how their plans are, you know, like if there, there's one rumor that there's going to have a blowout of the next Switch, um, or the next system, next month <laughs> in in January, which is after the holidays. So it seems kind of ridiculous. But then there's also, if things are to be believed, it's coming sooner than we might think. But there's a lot of stuff going out there. So it's hard to, it's hard to know what to believe in. But I do think a next major Mario or next major Zelda um might be further into, especially Zelda, into 2025. So through 2024, they need something else. I imagine it'll be Mario Kart um, for the next system and some other, a bunch of other, you know, smaller things like they did with experimental, like with arms and stuff like that. But that the carrier... The system launcher, the killer app, the system seller, uh, which would also be cross-gen and also be aimed to reinvigorate the Metroid fran franchise would be Metroid Prime 4. And uh, it's a personal want and hope of mine, but it's, I think it's also a smart, doable plan. They will position Metroid Prime 4 as the series' Breath of the Wild. I mean, Breath of the Wild is the top-selling Zelda game. Uh, that's something to say. And it turned things around because a lot of the Zelda games uh, from GameCube onto the Wii, onto Wii U, they were not... Mm, they weren't selling. Not, not like they should have been. And maybe that's because of the user base. Maybe that's because of the system. Maybe that's because of this, that, and the other. Um, I think it's because... Breath of the Wild came at the right time at the launch of a system, but it was also cross-gen. It was it was to aim to reinvigorate and return to the roots and really blow up the Zelda franchise. And I think Metroid Prime 4 should be aimed to do the same. Because wouldn't it be better to have a Mario, a Zelda... And another big franchise to to balance between to to have in um, in a catalog of of big time games on a system. Wouldn't it be nice for Metroid to finally sell like it deserves to? I mean, you know, and Metroid is my favorite franchise. So, of course, I'm saying these things, but I really do think that something big Metroid related will happen. And if they're smart, if they do it right, 
they could it could be the Breath of the Wild of the Metroid franchise. Now, I'm not saying that it would outsell Breath of the Wild. I'm not saying that it's going to be better than Breath of the Wild. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that they could treat it marketing, hype, using it as a system seller, um, as the killer app for the next Switch, um, while also keeping it cross-gen, while, you know... It'll be there at the launch of the next Switch and could be a graphical showcase. Like Breath of the Wild, for its time, was, I think it's a, it's a graphical showcase for a portable system to have near console quality graphics, you know. But here we go with all the rumors of the next system. It's going to be more powerful and it's got to be able to a little bit hold its own against something like PlayStation 5. Um, in a portable light, you know, I'm not trying to say that it's going to be more powerful. No, I'm not delusional. I'm not stupid. I'm just saying that it's, it's got to be more powerful and Metroid and Metroid remastered prime remastered is a beautiful game on the original switch. It is. And you could even argue that Metroid dread, which isn't 3d, but still, uh, like plays like a 2D old school uh, Metroid game, it looks gorgeous too. And it was used to launch the um, the Switch OLED, which, you know, um, I think it would be really smart for them to do this and give them some time, a big game for next year, for the next system, to give them some time before they work on the next Mario and the next Zelda. Um, in the meantime... These things like a Twilight Princess and, and Wind Waker collection and a Metroid Prime 2 and 3 collection, those would be great. And going into next year, you're going to have other remakes like the the Luigi's Mansion one and all that stuff. They should do this. They should do that with Kid Icarus on 3DS. They should, they should do all of those things. Those are the kinds of games that would work on the original Switch while they build time and and stuff for the next Switch. Um, and I keep saying next Switch. It may not even be called Switch. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to talk about with the next Switch, but I think at the Game, game Awards, which is what this video is about, um, which is what this talk is about, is I think there's going to be something big Metroid-related. I could be completely wrong about them saying anything about the next Switch. Or maybe the graphics will look so good that you'll think it has to be for the next platform. But they won't say that it's for the next platform. Um, and, you know, people will be asking questions and people will be interested and they'll be like, well, what's it going to be for? You know, maybe that's what it's all about. And then maybe when they do the blowout next month or at, uh, you know, whenever it is next year that they have a blowout for the next system, then, then they'll announce, oh yeah, and that Metroid Prime 4, it's coming to the original Switch, but it's also going to come to this next system too. Maybe that's when they do it, or maybe they do it at the Game Awards, who knows? It could be crazy. All I know is, is that um, this is what they should do. <laughs> I don't really know anything. I just, uh, I, that's my theory that that's, that's what they would do. Um, and, you know, uh, that'd be great. Um, tell me what you think. Uh, I really think that I'm on to something. Uh, it's, it's not like I'm the only one who has any of these kind of theories or anything like that. But I just do believe that the Switch was, when it launched, was a great concept. And, but on top of that, it had a killer app in Breath of the Wild. And they should do the same with this next switch because, you know, a hybrid system won't necessarily be it, it'll it'll be old news. So why get a new hybrid system? Oh, because it has better graphics and look at what Metroid Prime 4 looks like on this system. Look what the other games will look like on this system from third parties in the first you know year. There will be probably tons of those and. You know, if they, they 
hit everything with the ground running, they got to have a killer app like Breath of the Wild for the next system. But it can't be Breath of the Wild. It can't be a remake of Breath of the Wild or some other game. It can't be, you know, uh, something that's out of the blue, like, you know, it's... Well, I mean, it could be something out of the new blue. Don't get me wrong. But I think leading with one of their major franchises and finally making it a major franchise would be the best. Not only for the next system, not only for them, the, the company, but also for the franchise of Metroid to begin with. Um, that's, I think, you know... It's it's crazy the switch effect when it came to like things like Pikmin and stuff like that. Games that traditionally weren't big time sellers are all of a sudden big time sellers, and it's because the 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 Switch brand uh, has so many people in it. It's you know it's what's called the Switch effect. You have you have so many active users. Even if you sell to one percent of them, you've sold to a million people. <laughs> Even if you sell to 2% of them, you, that's, I mean, of the active users that are still active and still find the Switch to be fresh, well, now the next Switch is going to be, you know, even more fresh because it's new and it'll have better graphics. So what better way to show off something like that than to have its own Breath of the Wild, not with fantasy and artistic style, uh, like Breath of the Wild to sell the machine, but technological and impressive graphics to help sell the machine too. I'm kind of um, going off on a tangent there, but I really do think that at the Game Awards, something big Metroid is coming. So uh, we'll have to watch tomorrow and see.